Oh. And magic smoke comes out. That's not good. Welcome back. In this episode, all you see is, I guess, Commodore stuff. And I bought it for 145 on eBay and this was an auction and I had to pick it up myself. So let's get right into it. These are four boxes and the first box contains GigaCat Plus, including the program discs, which seem to be, you know, they're not sealed. That's a construction program for the C64. Ooh, <laughs> elegant. Next up, we have the C64 C128 Master Text Plus. Without the disc, I assume this disc is somewhere in all the boxes. And that is called Bookware, just like this. So there's a software and a book. And this is from Markt and Technik, which was a very popular publisher back in the day. We have Platinum Capcom US Gold Free LED Storm with on cassette tape. Hey, look at this. And we also have a very crunchy Thundercats, which does not belong here. But we have the manuals. Hmm. These don't sound nice. And which games do we have? We have Forgotten Worlds, Strider, Black Tiger, and Ghouls and Ghosts. Yeah, there are quite some arcade classics here. Nice, on tape, because tape was the thing to go back in the day, at least here in Germany, because we were poor. No, we weren't, but we were poor enough to <coughs> not afford 5041. Do we have here Own Bishop, the C64 Games book. It's a bit dusty, but it's an original Commodore book, number four. Nice. Next up we have, now there's grass in here, Stony Soft. Software for everybody. Beethovenstrasse 1 in Babenhausen. And this is, I think, this is actually a catalog of software. So this is not unusual. Back in the day we had these. Um, I think this is all pu yeah, it's public domain and shareware. So you had a list of public domain and shareware and most um, sellers just put one of these catalogs in their packages, in their mail order packages. And you could buy these for, drum roll, five marks. No, that is the shipping. Uh, you could buy them for one, 60, one mark 65 or one mark 50 or one mark 40, depending on how much you actually bought. Nice, it's a real piece of history, but it already has the five digit um, post light zahlen, it's called, it's a zip code. And that was not the 80s. This must have been the 90s or 2000s. Not quite sure when the five digit zip code was introduced in Germany. Next we have C64 Geos 1.3 German. Also, no disc, but the disc will be somewhere, I'm sure. What do we have here? Geos manual. Also a bit crunchy, but still good, except for the grass. And then we have a super classic. I remember this game from back in the day. Nick Feldo plays the Open for the C64 and yeah, it's the tape version without the manual. Would really have loved to have the manual for this one. Oh, it's already grass all over here. Yeah, and that is what you got in terms of golf back in the day, 900 screen scrolling map of the Royal St. George's golf course in Sandwich. 300 software pack by Multisoft, which is, I don't know what this is. Yeah, this is, I guess, shareware again. Yeah, 
Shareware catalog. Multisoft. This looks like a manual. Golf conflict. This is pretty sure a game. Yep. I assume it's some kind of shareware game. And it also has a map. Iran, Oman, Iraq, Saudi Arabia. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> yeah, that is quite uh, quite usual for the for the time back then that you got just a printed or copied manual. And Sierra uh, started like this. It, Printed manual in a Ziploc bag with a disk. Then we have the 99005 and a quarter inch disk drive manual. I assume we will also get to see the drive. Let's put this to the side for now. Then we have clowns for the C64, and that is pretty much all there is on documentation. Then we have 10 Great Games 2. Colossal Gremlin compilation, also on tape, and it features. It features. Let me see. I can see this. Bulldog Mask, Auf Wiedersehen Monty, which means goodbye Monty. Samurai trilogy, Convoy Raider, Jack the Nipper, Two in Coconut Cappers, Basil the Great Mouse Detective, Water Polo, Thing Bounces Back, and Rebounder. And it's on cassette tape and it's a bit beat and it has no manual. Hmm. Okay. Ooh, now comes a super classic, which is Paperboy on C64 cassette. Wow, don't know what that all is. Do I want to know what this is and this? Not sure. Yeah, no manual. Now comes some. Miscellaneous stuff. Oh, I guess here's the ad address of someone. We have disk for the book master text. See, told you. And done. Now what is all this stuff? Yeah, so this is just a whole bunch of catalogs and cards and flyers from some PD, public domain, sellers and <laughs> nice. This package was packed for you by you're someone who wanted to put up a user group for the C64. I assume this is at the beginning of the 90s when the C64 was replaced by the Amiga and they wanted you to send in your address so they could put you on a list. I guess this was some initiative from some public domain seller so he could keep up his business. We have a user's manual for a Citizen 120D. That was a printer I always wanted to have back as a kid. Uh, the MPS 801. We will see this printer in a minute I guess. We have Playtime Magic Disc but it's empty. Yeah, That was, um, if I'm correct, some of the these disc magazines back in the day. But I think at the pretty end of the lifetime of the C64. So here's another one. Paint Boutique by Data Becker. And it's pretty dirty. Let's take a look inside. Ah, it's complete. And I assume it at one point cost 20 mark. Doesn't have a price printed on here. Good, so that was box number one. That's Next up we have this bundle, Top Games on Disc, which is some kind of C64 Special Edition, or 64 Special Edition, and it has all the maps for Ultima 2. And we have Golden Disc 64, Turrican one. We have Magic Disc 64. We have Golden Disc 64. Magic Disc 64. These are all just uh, 
the covers, or maybe these were just covers. I don't never bought a Magic Disk 64 magazine. Game on, game on. And these are the 93 editions. Game on, Magic Disk, Magic Disk. So they kept all this stuff, which is interesting. 64 tips and tools, 40 new commands for graphics and floppy from 93. No, it's number 93. Well, let's see. Hmm. Okay, so this seems to be a They made a mistake here, so they put the cover on the wrong way around. I don't know from when this is. Another 64. Another 64, this time is Geos. Another 64, this time is Graphics. Another Geos. Playtime. So this is more of a Wait, Rebel Assault was a CD-ROM game for the PC. Why is there 264 in here? Oh, Super Bomberman. So this is one of these magazines I've never seen, Playtime. Ah, okay, so they have different systems. PC, Amiga, Mega Drive, Mega CD, Super NES. We have the instructions for the action replay, ultimate utility cartridge. I guess we will see this soon. And another one for that. We have a few cartridges. Jungle Hunt. I guess this is the first C64 game I ever played back in the day um, at a friend's house. This is cool. Atari Soft embossed here. Some mystery cartridge. Ooh, that's interesting. Tooth Invaders. That should be the, what was it called? Action Replay 4. No, actually play six, this is, no label. And clowns, for which we have the manual, actually. We have this NOS new old stock C64-128 printer interface, which uh, you have your serial connection on the C64 and you get a Centronix port. And it also has, for five volts, I assume, for the power, this little connector for the tape um, tape connector. Then we have this 1531. Uh, it's actually, I don't know what it is. Oh, that is very, very crust, crusty. That is a 60, C16 plus four drive, but you can use this adapter. Then you have a C64 or WIC20 drive. Nice, but uh, we have a Citizen 120D printer with a print cartridge. I assume that is dead. That is a nice compact printer. Function-wise, I guess it has pretty much the same function like the um, MPS801. So nothing to see here. I think it had a some kind of tray back here, but tray is not yet visible. So maybe it's down in one of these boxes. Okay. And that is, uh, is it a serial printer? Yes, it's a serial printer for the C64. So they, these came in different versions, if I recall correctly. And you could have these for the CPC and stuff like that, and the Commodores, and even the Centronics version, if I'm not mistaken, don't quote me here. This is the Commodore version. We have a mystery box which says Biodoc, and I had one of these boxes back in the day, and these are discs, and it's indeed Biodoc. Some program for the C64. You have another disc box, and man, I can tell you I have disc, oh, disc boxes more than I can ever eat in my life. This is could have been a nice box if it wasn't so uh, crunchy. Index poster. So another catalog of shareware. 
and some discs. The Painter, Visual Writing, Giant Pack, Power Pack, Energy Pack, Mammoth Pack, Sabres Pack. And some instructions. Visual Writing, so this belongs to this Visual Writing disc right here. And we have our first piece of hardware and someone took the time and put in the protective thingy here. And it's a serial drive for the C64. But it's not a 1541 and it's still under warranty, it seems. Never seen one of these drives. So this must be the 9900 disk drive. Yep, looks like it. And I think it is just a standard floppy drive. You have to we have a mouse, Datalux SV705. I assume this is a Geos mouse and it is really, really dirty. We have a Quickshot Warrior 5, which is actually a PC joystick, in the box. Let's check it out. It's actually in here. It's dusty. I had exactly this joystick back in the day and you can switch between the hard mode and the soft mode, if I recall correctly. Could be completely wrong, I had to actually uh, manually dial in the potentiometers. Yeah, this has this DB15 or whatever connector, which you usually connect it to your sound blaster card or if you had a controller card. The box is in great condition. This looks actually almost new, except for this little crease here. We have a 1541 and that is an interesting beast because it is actually the classic case but it's a light colored drive. Not sure if this is stock or someone made it this way. I assume someone did a mod here. So that was box number two. So next up we have something completely Commodore unrelated, but it was in the box. So this is a Super Electron TV game, Magnavox licensed. So I assume this is really a Magnavox of some kind. And it's in this box, I assume. And the box is in fairly good condition, except for this little tear here. And it's actually in here. It also seems to be complete, except for the manual. We have a Commodore 64. And this doesn't look stock. It's a standard keyboard, but that is not the keyboard for this case. So we will take a look at that. It's a pretty high serial number, so later batch run but it still has the screws so that's good. Not sure if it has any enhancements. I don't think so but it makes some interesting noises so yeah. We will take a look inside that in a minute. And we have just another C64. Also no visible mods. It has a number here. Oh and it is a bit crushed. No sound this time. So you know what, let's take a look inside. Okay. Okay, this is screwed in. So fuse not blown, that is good. And we have this metal shield, which I have really never seen in a German machine. Yeah, we will take a look and see if this actually works. Ah, there's a... Okay, this looks 
pretty improvised, so someone didn't have the standoffs for the keyboard, or at least one was missing here, so he did put some wood there. Yeah, <laughs> someone just glued a piece of wood down here. Interesting. Interesting idea. And did extend the notoriously short cable. So let's see what's rattling in here. I guess it was just a cable. Okay. So let's put this piece of art back together. That's really an interesting idea with a piece of wood. Okay, that was box number three. On to the last. So this box only contains boxes. We have a Sigma disk box and we have a DD3100L disk box, both with the matching keys, which is nice. Uh, no registers inside, but I don't care. So the first two disk boxes and there will be more. Next up we have two disk boxes, one for the smaller three and a half inch discs and we have TIE Fighter Lynx 386 Tori. Oh, we have an original Lemmings disc for the PC, I assume. Tarakan Flipper Wing Commander Imperia and Comanche and Road Track. Okay, nice. So this is a PC disc box. Let's put this to the side. Here we have a box labeled Geos. A lot of Geos discs. So someone actually took Geos very seriously here. And again we have discs. Ooh, ASCOM. Fancy. And we have what looks like almost brand new discs for the C64. We have our final book of the batch and this is the big C64 book and it is indeed big and it looks used so someone actually took the time and read through the whole thing. Okay let's check out the first C64. This is the one with the uh, beige case or light beige case and the brown keys which looks like Frankenstein together and oh we get a screen and the picture looks a little shitty and it looks just as purple on the screen as it does on the phone or the camera hmm. the keys seem to work just fine yeah nice okay so we have our first winner uh, we will do some further testing in, a, in an extra video, but for now this is what it is. Okay, next up we have the, I call it the beat up one, because there's scratches and scuff marks and the broken pieces on the back. Let's see, red light. Well, also works and gives the same crispy, shitty image. Let's check the keys. Yeah, all seem to be, except for the return key. Which does not quite return. And shift key also doesn't. So that is, this one has problems. Cutter key doesn't work. Hmm, space does. So next up we have the 1541, the Frankenstein. It's still dirty, I didn't clean anything and it's disgusting, it washed my hands 10 times now. Um, I use this C64 because this actually works as far as we know. So let's switch on the 1541. Ooh, that's one crunchy sound man. But, well, let's put in a disc and see what happens because we have nothing to lose here. 
a snapper. Let's switch on the 364. That sounds pretty normal. Oh, and magic smoke comes out. That's not good. Ooh, geez. Oh, that smells horrible. Okay, so much for nothing to lose. Something just did blow up in there. Wow. It won't stop. Just. Just going on. You can see it's a few minutes later, but it's still smoking. So after opening the drive and taking a closer look, I noticed this in the cover. And if you put this here, you can see there is the culprit. And it actually toasted itself and something right beneath it. So do we trust these blue guys anymore? I do not think so. So it's C15, which gave up the ghost. And L8 took a hit too. So I guess I have to at least change these. The rest of the board looks pretty good. Haven't take, uh, didn't take a look at the, the power supply yet. But I can take the drive and put it in another uh, 1541 I have, which is still in good condition. And this is, by the way, a Rev B. And it really stinks still. Oh, man. Oh. So, since we had such good luck with the 1541, let's try the other drive. And I guess the 1541 will be a, either a repair or a Frankensteining video. Not sure yet. So, let's plug this in. This comes with its own power supply, which did not explode now. Switching on the drive. Looks good, gets green, I like. Switch on the computer. Yep, looks good too. Let's put in a disk. Do stuff. Searching. But I think it's not finding. Let's try another disk to find out. also does not look good. Yeah, so that is a bust. So we have one working C64, we have one partially working C64 where the keyboard doesn't want us, or the CIA is dead, or marginal, and we have one drive that, ex that exploded on me, and one drive that just refuses to work. Okay, still I paid 145, and I guess the value is here. And tape. And here we go. Oh, and it found Paperboy. Look at that. Okay. So it did load the loader. Now it stopped again. And if I start it again, it works again. So, yeah, I, I think there's a very tired belt in here. Let's check out some cartridges. And we'll leave the mystery cartridge for last. And let's try the jungle hunt. Oh, that's crunchy. And we have jungle hunt. Yay. Oh, I remember that game. I think this actually was the first C64 game I played at a friend's house on his 128. Okay, on to the next. Next we have Tooth Invaders. Let's check it out. And there it is, Tooth Invaders. Press trigger to play.
Uh, I think this proves that this it works. Nice. Next up we have clowns. A classic. And clowns it is. Yeah, awesome sound. That's about the kind of sound I could manage to create. Oh, clown dies. Bad press. Okay, next clown dies. No. Next up we have the I already forgot what it was. Something with six. So let's put that in there. Start it up. And it is the Action Replay Professional version 6. Configure memory. Oh, okay. Uh, so it has two buttons. If you press this button, you get back to the menu. If you press the other button, just uh, resets into this menu. And there you have a monitor and stuff like that. So this was pretty much the, the basic thing to um, to crack games back in the day, I guess. Or one of these. Yeah, nice. Okay, works. And that brings us to the mystery last cartridge. So, place your bets in the comments. What could this cartridge be? Just based on the non-descriptive backside, which says Commodore made in Hong Kong. I will place my bet on international soccer, but yeah, we will see. And it is uh, it is black screen. Yeah, it was a little bit dirty, but not too much. <laughs> okay, let's try this again. And action. Still nada. I just noticed it doesn't even have a screw. Yeah, the mystery uh, remains. Maybe I can get this open somehow without killing it. I will try to put some IPA on the corners here so maybe this works to loosen the glue. So I just finished filming my C64 haul and we have another box with Commodore goodness. And the box is very small for what's supposed to be inside. So let me show you the box. It's not a big box. We have something plastic, the cover, which is obviously cracked. No wonder here. We have a few discs like the 1351 mouse utility disc. Take a look at this in a minute. We have a monitor, a power supply, and you can already see it's for the 128. A 1571 drive, which hopefully still works and doesn't give us the magic smoke. So everything here is supposed to work and test it. So here's a 128, cover is smashed, but I guess it was before. Machine looks to be in good condition. No visible cracks for now. I will check that out later. And finally we have a Philips green monitor, which like in a miracle survived chipping. And it has the aesthetics of an 1084 Commodore monitor. Yeah, let's uh, take it out of the box and put it on the table and see if it really works. Okay, the 128 is set up with all the original parts like the power supply and the discs and the monitor. So, yeah, let's start this. That made no sound at all. We will see if it does give us a picture eventually. Start the floppy drive. Which doesn't stop turning, which might be normal. And let's start the 128 and we get sound from the floppy. 
we had a picture on the screen. Ah, maybe I have to start it in 80. I think it's Kirchen mode. Let's see again. Ah, and there we go. Nice. So yeah, it's flashy, but that's only on, on the phone. It's a very, very crisp display. Okay, so let's try. I have the CPM disk. Let's try if this works. So that should, in 80 columns mode, auto boot. Let's see. Oh, and it is. Nice. Okay. So this is ticking away. And there we are in CPM. Okay, so that actually works. Nice. So this display is great for playing Eye of the Beholder because this can display the map in the RGB port and you can use your TV or your second monitor as a main game monitor. And I will do this. So I didn't set up anything here and it just, just plain works. And didn't crack or anything. So that is, wow, I'm actually impressed. Nice. Yeah, so there's not much to see here other than that. I also have the Star Painter 128 disc, which might be a program for painting, and the 1351 mouse utility disc. And that is pretty much it. Yeah, so I guess this now concludes this video. Uh, until next time. Adios. Thank you for watching Retro is the New Black. If you are new to the channel, please like and subscribe. If you like the video, please share. Every like, share, and comment helps a lot. Until next time, bye bye.